Welcome to Scatter Travel TV. Today we are in Italy and we are going to do a day tour from Florence to Pisa by train. We knew that this day tour from Florence was going to be a big day for us. So we hustled out of bed at 8 a.m. and got started. We went directly to the train station. Um, when you get to the train station, you look for the electronic board and find the train. We found the train going to Pisa and went out to the track where it was and got on. And they don't give you a whole lot of time. You want to be there on time on the platform, ready to board that train because they do leave exactly on time. And we got there with no time to spare. And did I mention one of our party was in a wheelchair? So we were throwing things in and getting everybody in as fast as could go. Um, one note is I found in a lot of, of countries they don't cater so much to handicapped people. And so there weren't a whole lot of ramps and things like that to get onto the train. So it did. we did have to hustle with that. We did find that you know if she could climb on the train then we could fold up the wheelchair and and put it up on the train and there was a place for them to sit in there a note uh for you to remember that there is usually racks at the end of each car for your luggage so you don't take it inside the car with you they have a place for you just to stick it out there and then then you go in and find your seat depending on what kind of train you're on um will depend on whether or not you if you're in first class, you're going to have a bathroom in your car. If not, you probably won't. We'll have to go out to go to one. It, uh, if you're in first class, if you buy a first class reserve seat, you'll have an exact seat. And if not, you will be looking for a seat. Also, there is overhead racks for your smaller items. Anyway, so we were on our way. Once you arrive at the Pisa station and you exit the train, before you exit the train station, take a look at the very right at the front of the front lobby of the train station will be a sign and I'll say Tobashi, T O B A C C H I. This is where you're going to get your bus ticket to go out to the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The ticket when we were there was one euro. Then you exit the station. As you exit the train station, if you look across to your right and across the street, you're going to see a building called the N.H. Cavalieri. That's where the bus stops. The bus you want is going to be yellow and has a red stripe on the front bumper area. It will say Lamrosa, L-A-M-R-O-S-S-A, -S -S on an electric, tr electric sign on the front of the bus. Now the stop you're going to you want to get off on is called Tori, T O R R E. If you're unsure about it, make sure that you tell the driver where you're going. They're very good to help and he will help you get the right stop because when you get there um on the right side of the bus you're going to see the leaning tower of Pisa through the arch, but by the time you see that, it may be too late to get off. So make sure that you get the right stop. You're going to enter through um, this archway, and inside of that is it's going to open up into a great big plaza. There's shopping areas there with lots of little booth things sh selling things, and it's across the way is called the Field of Miracles Piazza. 
this is where you want to go in. From there, you're going to see the baptistry immediately caught my attention. I think that almost caught it before the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The baptistry is a cylinder-shaped building, and it's almost as tall as the Leaning Tower of Pisa, Pisa and has a beautiful dome topping it. The baptistry, the baptistry was probably one of my very favorite places in Pisa. When you walk in, it is just almost overwhelming as to the sound inside of it. Um, it it's got to have almost perfect acoustics in there. It's amazing that they could build the dome the way they did. But just as you walk in, immediately in front of you, you're immediately caught by the sight of the uh, font. And there is a statue of John the Baptist on it. But what was really interesting is that they were doing a demonstration of the sound while we were there. And they would make these, so you would just hum a note, a tone, and it would just vibrate through the building and echo. And it sounded a lot like what I would imagine um, hearing the monks sing or chant. And so that was a really interesting experience to have. I would definitely, definitely um, take the time to see the baptistry because, like me, it may end up being one of your very favorite places. Now let me share the recording I did of this sound uh, demonstration. Remember, this is just a lady humming or vocalizing just single tones at a time. Next to that was the cathedral. The cathedral was magnificent. It had wood carvings in it that were just wonderful. The mosaics over the front and inside, it was just ornate. Almost seemed unbelievable for that time and tool and technology that they were able to do that. They were carved columns and carvings on the outside. Um, just intricate carvings. The large columns lined either side of the center of the cathedral and it would make you just kind of look up at the ceiling and on the ceiling there appeared to be these gold squares with floral centers. Truly a work of art. I especially did love the panels on the back of the benches and that lined the outer walls inside. Each square had a different picture made out of inlaid wood. Um, don't miss them. It was such. It must have taken such talent, and those should be enjoyed. There's a large um, lamp chandelier that hangs over the pulpit in there, and it said that Galileo sat in mass, and during the oration, 
the chandelier started to swing slightly and that's where he started to work on his pendulum theory so don't miss the cathedral either this is a great place um, I'd never seen a harpsichord before and that was exciting for me and there was a harpsichord there um, there's just so much to see inside of the cathedral um, also right there you can then walk over to the museum and the museum there's like three museums there and this one had frescoes paintings clear back and you could just see how it showed how they drew them and then how they painted them in and you could see the different steps of it the museum is um, a great place to get a feel for history if you want a truly extraordinary experience of seeing history brought back to life on the um, to the side of the cathedral is what's called Campo Santo it is the monumental cemetery many people miss this because it doesn't look like anything to go and see but you need to go through to this area once you enter into the uh, once you enter through the doorway and go in, you're going to see this this building that is built in a rectangle. And it has columns surrounding the entire thing with a grass area in between. It's very comforting and very quiet, just as a cemetery should be. It also has um, the sarcophagi where people were buried, important people. It also has the stone um, laid graves on the floor of it. At one point the Allied forces dropped bombs on it and just destroyed most of it. Um, there are some statues still left, some of the original sarcophagi left. Um, it is, uh, there is a fresco in there called the Triumph of Death and you can still see part of that and they are restoring those frescoes to this and it is just something to walk through. Um, and most people do miss that because they don't realize it's there. So make sure that you go and see that part. See, I love this whole thing. It is called um, Pisa, the Lean Tower Pisa. That area is called the Square of Miracles. And each of these places seem like a miracle to me. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is directly behind the cathedral. And it is leaning, as you can see, a small amount. And it, what it did is they built it, but they built it over ground that wasn't stable. And so it did uh, sink uh, to a degree. And they have stabilized it since then. And it has now been reduced to approximately a four degree. Uh, lean, but it is quite a sight to stand by it, and people just line up and buy for a chance to get to take that picture of them trying to hold the tower. Behind the Leaning Tower Pisa is another wonderful museum. This one contains most of the statues and carvings that are available for viewing that have been moved to the museum. You can even take some fun pictures in there. I love music, so one of my favorite things that I saw in the museum was this hand-printed, hand-painted hymn book. I also love the pictures painted of Jesus and his family and the different ways that the different artists through the centuries portrayed that scene. So this is the end of our Pisa trip. Come and enjoy Pisa, but make sure you take your picture with the Leaning Tower of Pisa so you can say, I was here. Join us again at Scatter Travel TV for more travel shows, tips, and destination information.